Hello, my name is Claire Bent. I'm an interventional radiology consultant at the Royal Bournemouth Hospital. Interventional radiology is a way in which we treat many conditions using x-ray guidance and pinhole surgical techniques. We perform lots of procedures from insertion of special lines to access veins for treatment to repair of aneurysms, which are swellings of the blood vessels within the body to prevent aneurysm rupture. Lots of these procedures were traditionally treated with open surgical techniques, but we are now able to treat them in a pinhole fashion. As a specialty, interventional radiology is growing at approximately 20% per annum. The Royal Bournemouth Hospital is the IR centre for Dorset and South Wiltshire, providing specialist interventional radiology services for a population of over one million people. The procedure you're about to see today is a varicocele embolisation. A varicocele is a swelling in the scrotum caused by a collection of abnormally large blood vessels or veins. They are often described as feeling like a bag of worms and varicoceles can cause scrotal discomfort and can lead to defective sperm formation affecting the chances of conception. I'm now going to perform this pinhole technique. Hi, we're here. Um, so the team have first of all started with a who safety check. So what we do for that is we go through the patient's ID, check we've got the right equipment in the room and sort of talk through any problems um, before we start the case, which is in line with a sort of nice guidance and standards to make sure we minimise any problems during the procedure. So we've also cleaned the patient and he is ready to, to, to go really for us to start. So the first thing we're going to do is get the ultrasound machine ready and then I will begin an ultrasound of his neck. Um, if I can get Noel to just look at the screen on the right, um, I'm sure that Andrew or Chris may have already discussed with you it's a varicocele where there are veins that are enlarged around the um, testicle and um, that can create heat around the testicle and cause pain and also can alter the motility of the sperm so it can contribute to fertility issues and the, the aim today is to try and thrombose off those veins and shrink them to get rid of the patient's pain and also improve sperm motility for pregnancy want to improve your chances of getting pregnant with your partner anyway. Okay, so I'm just going to get everything ready now. do is we use a mixture of modalities so we use ultrasound to get access into the vein and I'm choosing the internal jugular vein approach which is via the neck um, so I'll ultrasound initially and once I've got access into the vein in the neck I'll then convert to using fluoro so x-rays um, that is controlled by this pedal you can see on the floor with my foot so when I want to image, I use the pedal to image. And because it's x-rays, we're all wearing lead protection devices and monitors and lead glasses to minimize our exposure to. So I'm going to start with ultrasounding the neck. So we're going to go to the ultrasound machine now. And there's just some cold jelly going on your neck, OK? Can you uh, reduce the depth for me, please? Way. Yeah. So on this image, we have this large black area here, and that is called the internal jugular vein. That's what I'm interested in going into to get to the testicular vein, okay? This is the carotid artery pulsating, and this is the thyroid gland, okay? So at the patient's neck, I have the ultrasound in place. I advance the needle into the skin, so you're going to get a needle prick into the skin. Okay, one, two, three. And you can see a little bit of movement as I 
indent the vein there and I start injecting local anaesthetic. Okay, and that is to numb the skin. Okay. I then make a very tiny incision which is about two millimetres. And then I use a larger, slightly larger needle to go actually into the vein to actually access it properly, okay? And now I can just about see my tip of my needle in the vein. If you look at the skin here, you've got blood coming out. I'm going to unscrew this. And then I advance a wire through the needle. Sorry, I've got to come in here. Okay. So I currently have a wire. Can you see that one there? Yep. And I advance, this is a sheet. It allows us to inject contrast into the vessel. So I pop that over the wire and that gives us access into the vein, okay? Okay, the next thing I use is a catheter. So this uh, blue tube is a catheter. And via the catheter, you can see it's got a shape to it. And there are lots of different catheters with different shapes. Some of them are like shepherd's crooks. Some of them are at much steeper angles. But this is called an MPA catheter. And we can see it on imaging. So it's very useful. We can see where we're going. And we also have a wire. It's called a hydrophilic wire. So it, it makes it very slippy with the water. And you can also see that also, if I put it actually on the table, you can see that also has a curve in it and that helps us manipulate through the vessels. So we put this through the sheath. There's a little valve in the top of it, like so. Get my wire back in, it's flipped out. Like so. And at this point, we start looking at the screen and start x-raying. So on the screen at the moment, a bright tip at the end where Eddie's finger is, and then below that, you can see a wire moving around. You can mag up for me, Eddie, just to show you. Okay, so at this point, we've gone into the internal <coughs> jugular vein, into the SVC, which is the big vein that drains into the heart, and then we're into the heart now. And then we've gone straight through the heart and out the other side. And we're now in the, the vessel called the IVC, which is the inferior vena cava, which drains all the blood from your legs um, back up to the heart. So the next thing we want to do is we want to find the left renal vein. So uh, my, my wire has just flipped into it, so it comes round and to the left. So Obviously, it's opposite on the screen, so the right-hand side of the screen is the left side. So at the moment, I've just gone into the left <coughs> renal vein, and I try and advance my catheter over the wire. doesn't quite like it, so I'll say, can you have a big breath in for me, please? And hold it there, so we try and use the patient's breathing to help us and breathe away. Can you give me that back? Can you make that up for me? So I've just banged up the image to make it bigger so I can see more easily. And at this point, I rotate my catheter to aim downwards, which is where the testicular vein will be coming from, injecting contrast, which I think you can probably see now, and that is your testicular vein. Um, I think you, could just, you might have just seen it. If you go south of me, if I inject contrast, can you see a tube opening up? and it's going down towards the pelvis, and I'm injecting again. That's the testicular vein, and that's where we want to go and embolize and block off. For this, we use coil embolics. There's lots of different embolization gadgets. 
which I, um, I'm sure one of the consultants up in the consultant lounge can explain to. So we follow the wire with the catheter, keep advancing as low as we can go, like so. I then check my position with contrast, do a gentle injection, and you can see here there's lots of veins going towards the testicle down at the bottom end of the pelvis. So at this point we know we're in the right place and what we need to do is coil it off and block the blood vessel off. So what we look at is the size of the vein and we try and get a coil that is just a little bit, maybe two millimetres bigger than the diameter of the vein to block it up and the coil then can be fixed in that vessel. Um, solidly so it doesn't go anywhere. So for him I would say the vessel is probably about 8 millimetres so I'll use a 10 millimetre coil. Now the coils we've got have little fibres threaded on so they're sort of almost like little feathers and that makes them prothrombotic which means they clot off the vessel very quickly. So can we get a 10 millimetre by... Uh, Let's go with a 40. So, 10 millimeters by 40 yeah. centimeters. 21. 20, yeah. 20, 20. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Uh, So this is where teamwork comes into play. Rob has to prepare everything for me to, to deploy. So we have a thing called a TUI Borst, which is an introducing device that I attach to this catheter. Okay. And this is this is actually the device. Um, Unfortunately, it'll be locked, but I will show you. I'll bring one up. Actually, I can probably just unlock this. So it has a locking mechanism because this is a detachable coil. If you can see, should I put it down? Uh, there is a coil, and there are little feathers just here on the coil. I'll bring some up to the room to show you in a second, okay? I'm just going to retract it back in because it's a detachable coil so I can pull it back into the system and advance it via the catheter into the vein. And you can see now onto the screen again, the very dense bit if I withdraw it, I'm back into the catheter, and if I push forward, I have a coil poking out. Okay, so that is the actual um, coil that we're about to deploy. It's still currently attached to my wire, which makes it super safe. So if I deploy it wrongly, I can just pull it back out again. And if we go back to the screen again, what we're doing is we are deploying it a bit like a spring. We're going to pack it as tightly as we can at the bottom end. So we put quite a few tight coils in at this point. And that's 40, centers, 40 centimetres worth of platinum coil with feathers packed into that distal vessel, so the, the, the furthest I can get down. So I'm going to... I, what I want to do is I want to coil a segment of at least 10 to 15 centimetres and take out any actual branches of the vessel too. And so I will get another coil now. So we go another 10 by 40, please. Okay. 10, 40, 20, 20, thank you. So if we go back to the screen again, so back to the image, what I will do is I'll just pull my catheter back just a little bit above the coil. So I'll just come back inject just to check if how many branches there are if there are any other branches there are a couple of little branches next to it so in a minute what i'll do is i'll deploy this coil and have another look to see whether i need to go down any other veins other than this main one so this is the second coil going so i'm going to unlock the coil and then advance the wire. 
and you can see it's suddenly become dense now back on the screen. And then I can start packing more coils out. So I'm going to pack this one quite tightly again, because then I'm going to just check to see what's what's left in regard to other branches. Can I go for a full strength contrast? Mm -hmm. So each of these coils are around about um, probably about 300 pounds each. So we kind of want to use enough to have a clinical success, but not too much that we <laughs> spend over the amount required per patient, because sometimes there are lots of veins to go. So can you go a little bit north for me, Eddie? So I'm injecting contrast now. At the moment, you can still see contrast going by passing the coils. Um, can you just point that out for me? So there's, a, there's one to the right of it, one to the left of contrast veins, one to the right, one to the left, and we've got, still got flow through. So we need to put some more coils in. So can we have a, a 12 by 40 this time, please? So I'm yeah. going to upsize my coil a bit this time. To just try and pack it a bit more. Yeah. I think the, the additional vessels we're seeing on the image are very, very small. So I think that actually if we just go across their origins, we probably don't even have to go into them. So as long as we take out the main testicular vein in, that should be enough. But we will see as we go move up the, the vein. I'm going for my third coil now. So just at the neck again here. So I'll undo the locking mechanism. And then I start advancing the coil into the patient. Okay. So if we look back then at the screen again, my coil is to the end of the catheter. And I'm going to pack really tightly again, like a slinky spring, as tight as I can on that one, just to see whether or not that stops the flow through into the bag seal, which is down obviously at the bottom of the screen. So if I inject contrast this time, it's, it's pretty much refluxing rather than going down. We've got static contrast below the coils. If I come up a little bit more. I'm going to put another coil in just because if we look at the image, um, Eddie, can you just point where the lateral vessel vein comes up? Keep going, keep going there. There's a little tiny, tiny branch at that point, and I want to definitely go across that origin, so I will have to extend my coils up a bit further, because what can happen is that you can take out the main testicular vein, and then the other veins can hypertrophy, which means get bigger, and then bypass this vein to the testicle, and then you have a recurrent varicocele, which we don't want. So we want to make sure we treat it all on one go. Okay, so can we get... Yeah, let's go for another top So we're going to hope this might be the last coil. Fingers crossed. <laughs> um, so we go for our fourth coil now. So we're still at 12 by 40 centimetres. So we've got quite long coils. So we're going with the fourth coil now. So what I might do with this one, I might lay it out a bit so make it a bit more wavy, a bit like a line. Um, because the feathers will still clot it up even if I haven't packed it tightly. And then just make sure I actually cover that top bit. So, so I'm just sort of laying it now. And now just at the top end, this is where I want to make sure. Can we go north with the screen? So at this point, I definitely want to have a nice big tight pack because that's where the little branch was. Okay, so that's fully deployed now. I'll come out a little bit out with my catheter. You see everything's getting a bit tight now. It's all in spasms. The vein, when we stick things in it, the vein sort of doesn't really like it. Um, and it, they clamp down on the coils because they start, the vein starts thrombosing and clotting off. In a second, can I just get you to hold your breath for me? Yeah. 
So what I'm going to do is a digital subtraction angiogram. It's actually a venogram that we're doing, but what I'm going to do is get him to hold his breath, and we're going to actually look at the proper flow through the coils. And if we can down to 48, I know he's not top and bottom going. That's 48. A little bit south for me. So we've got all the coils in view now on the image. Don't breathe. Don't move. Just keep holding that for me. And I'm going to inject contrast. And there's still a little bit going through at the moment but it is the only vessel that we need to embolize. So I'm happy, thank you. I'm happy that we probably don't need to do any more. So at that point, um, I will stop and withdraw the catheter. As I withdraw, have a quick look, there's nothing, no other vessels there for me to, to do anything with. Pull out and the procedure's finished. Pull out from the neck. And we're done. And um, no, if you want to come and have a look at his neck, uh, he's what's left is just this little hole that will just heal on its own, like he's cut himself. So it won't even have a stitch. We'll just put a dressing over that and he can go home within about an hour of the procedure as a day case procedure. And that's the end. Thank you. <laughs> well done, everyone. <laughs> thank you for watching, and thank you to the patient for giving his permission to share this film with you. If you're interested in learning more about careers in interventional radiology, please contact the Royal College of Radiologists or the British Society of Interventional Radiology.